last year uh, at Optimus Turikskval in uh, Marstrand, uh, they invited a uh, speaker from North Sales, um, and uh, he wasn't the greatest speaker for Opti kids, um, but once the sailors had gone, um, a bunch of us coaches uh, cornered him and asked him a bunch of things. And I've been meaning to re-digest uh, what he said or what I understood um, uh, for laser uh, for some time. Uh, so now I think I'm, I'm ready to do it. Uh, so this is mostly for um, understanding how you can use the center board um, to get into height mode. So uh, let's start off with some basics. Um, uh, our classic vector diagram. So we've got the uh, sail um, and uh, an imaginary line from the front of the sail to the back of the sail is called the cord. So you could think of the cord as the boom. Um, but the reason it's nice to talk about the cord is because we think of the lift coming from the sail. Um, as being perpendicular to the cord. Um, that's just sort of a way to define uh, what direction this is in. Uh, and then there's always going to be uh, drag as well. Whenever you have lift um, perpendicular to the cord, you have drag parallel to the cord, but, but pulling backwards. So all sails and airfoils and now foil foils um, have both lift and drag. Uh, so the reason a boat goes forwards is, be, is because a component of this, um, of this force pulling sideways, is cancelled out by the centerboard. So the centerboard um, creates uh, lift in the uh, direction perpendicular to its cord. Um, so I, I drew a, a cord on this, on this one there. Um, so... Then what you can do with arrows or vectors is you can take them and um, add them tip to toe um, or tip to tail. Uh, so if you have the lift and then you add um, the uh, lateral resistance um, from the uh, resistance to side slip of the centerboard, um, you get the resultant uh, or the result is a force pulling the boat straight forward. So that's why uh, sailboats go forward. Um, but then we can look, uh, sort of zoom in on the centerboard and think, I use the word lift for the centerboard, but the centerboard's underwater. Surely isn't the centerboard just, um, uh, designed to, uh, um, resist sideways, um, drag? Well, it was a bit more complicated than that. Uh, centerboards also create lift, and the reason for this is that centerboards are not a hundred percent efficient so that's kind of obvious a centerboard could never um uh completely stop you from sliding sideways unless the centerboard was the size of the whole ocean um not letting any water sneak past it so uh when you're using your centerboard dagger board um i'm gonna call them centerboards because i always forget to call them dagger boards um you are pointing in a direction, so we can have this dotted line be sort of an extension of the cord where the boat is pointing, because the centerboard's pointing in the same direction as the boat. Um, but you don't actually get to where you point to. You slide sideways, um, gradually slide sideways. So uh, dotted line is the direction of the boat, the uh, direction the boat's pointing. Uh, the black uh, is where you actually go. So the difference between these two is called leeway. Um, <laughs> there's no test. Uh, but what this means is that the flow that the centerboard experiences is not straight on. The flow that the centerboard experiences is the reverse direction. So the water is coming obviously in the opposite direction that the boat is going. Um, just because uh, if you take this to be a reference, um, it feels the water coming from the direction it's traveling in. Um, so that means that the um, uh, centerboard uh, or whatever foil this is, is traveling um, uh, si slightly diagonally through the water. So now if I back up a little bit, um, we know that sails and airplane wings create um, lift because they're 
asymmetric. They, they, they're, they've got a curve in one direction. Um, but, uh, so when you're sailing, you can increase the lift um, by deepening the sail, causing the, 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 um, the wind to bend more. You can reduce the lift by flattening the sail, uh, causing the uh, uh, wind to bend less. Um, but that's not the only thing that creates lift. Uh, the other thing that creates lift is the overall angle of the whole sail. So that's why um, if you head up, you don't have to hike as much. If you bear off a little bit, you have to hike much more. Uh, so when you change the overall angle of the sail, that's called changing the angle of attack of the wind. So what this leeway does um, is it creates an angle here. So the angle of attack of the water is not straight onto the foil's uh, cord. So that means you're trying to pull a centerboard sideways, diagonally through the water. I encourage you to actually take a centerboard and put it down in the water next to a dock uh, and walk along the dock and try to pull the centerboard slightly diagonally through the water. It's almost impossible. It just flips out sideways um, because they've been designed quite well uh, to uh, create lift. Um, and so in the old days, I think... I'm going to get this wrong, but um, uh, what were they, solings or, or dragons or something? Um, maybe even fins had just uh, these um, basically planks of metal sticking down as their centerboards. Um, but then we realized that if we make a teardrop shape, uh, a curved shape, the, the water will stay attached much more nicely. So you've got much more forgiving. So the more teardrop shaped uh, uh, foil is, the uh, easier it is to keep flow attached to it. So when you pull this centerboard diagonally through the water, um, oh, and I should say this also applies to the rudder, um, but let's just keep it simple for now uh, and just know that the rudder does the same thing, just being a bit more wobbly. Um, okay, so um, as you're pulling the centerboard diagonally through the water, um, you create high pressure on this side, low pressure on that side, and that's what's causing the centerboard to want to, to flip out that way um, when you pull it um, through the water next to the dock. Um, and of course, whenever there's lift, there's drag. Um, so uh, this, this angle of attack, um, you, so you can't change the, the, the on, a, on a laser, you can't change the shape of um, the centerboard. You may have heard of tacking uh, uh, foils um, on, on fancy boats. So some boats actually can change the shape of their um, underwater foils. But in a laser, obviously the centerboard stays the same shape. So the only way you can create lift is with this angle, um, this uh, uh, yeah, angle of attack of the water flow coming in either this angle, more this way, less. Uh, and so on. So the further you uh, turn the angle of attack, the more lift you get, but you also get more drag. So my drawings are not very good here or not very precise here. Um, uh, but what I've tried to show is that, uh, let's say this boat is on maybe a, uh, a broad reach. Um, uh, so it's going with the center board uh, pretty close to the direction um, that the boat, uh, um, there's not a lot of leeway is what I'm trying to say uh, on when you're going almost dead downwind. So uh, it doesn't create a lot of lift um, and it also doesn't create a lot of drag. Uh, so when you've got the center board going almost straight into the water, not a lot of lift, not a lot of drag. Now this one, let's say we're going upwind, so the the um, uh, there's quite a lot of sideways uh, force. You're you're getting back into this situation. Um, then you're really turning the centerboard quite a lot, um, and so you get a lot more lift because you have a bigger angle of attack. Uh, but you also get quite a bit more drag. Um, so you think, okay, well if I want to go into pointing mode, why why don't I just like crank the cen uh, centerboard over? Um, but you can imagine this as being before the start, when you're going very slowly um, uh, and you're pointing very high, 
and the boat's just drifting sideways like crazy. You're basically traveling sideways along the start line, a little bit forwards, but mostly sideways. So that happens when you get, um, you lose flow on the centerboard. Um, so you get turbulence here. So uh, lift stops being produced where the uh, flow of water separates from the foil. Um, and all of that is just contributing to drag. So it's like you're actually trying to pull this turbulent water along with the boat. So you create a huge amount of drag if there's uh, turbulence there. Um, water's something like a, a thousand, or was it 2,000 times denser than air? Uh, so a little bit of turbulence uh, creates a lot of drag. Um, uh, yeah, so... Um, how can we use this? Uh, so I, I, I originally said that this is like maybe if the red uh, red sail is is pretty far out so that the, the red um, lift is pulling almost forward so that there's not a lot of side um, pressure on the on the foil. Uh, but let's um, say that this is actually just um, all three of these are close hauled and they're just exaggerated. So, so um, this is when you go into speed mode. Uh, so you bear off and try to point the boat more in the direction um, that it's actually going instead of, for example, pointing up towards the, uh, just above a ley line to try to make a ley line. So instead of trying to make a mark, you're trying to go down and roll another boat. So the force is more lined up with the direction of travel. Um, you don't get as much lift from the center board, but you don't get, you get very little drag. Uh, so when you have little drag, you can go faster. Um, so one of sort of nice, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, like a vicious circle, but a good circle. Um, nice feedback loop, that's the word I was going for, is that if you bear off, um, and go in the same, almost the same direction as the uh, uh, center board um, wants to go. So if, if you were going this way and you're noticing that you have a lot of leeway, if you bear off to go almost in that direction, of course you still drift a little bit sideways, um, but if you don't try to point too high and you go um, a little bit lower, uh, then you go faster because there's less drag, and the lift is also related to the speed you go through the water. So you can go uh, lower, faster, and then you get some of this lift back. So that's sort of speed mode. The idea of speed mode is to bear off so that you're going with less leeway, uh, go faster, and try to use the speed uh, to cause you uh, to have more lift to re reduce the side slip. Um, now, height mode um, is where you try to sort of turn the, increase the angle of attack, turn the center board a little bit more um, to really bend the, the, the water um, underneath the boat. Because the more you bend the water, uh, the more lift you produce. Um, yeah, you go a little bit slower, uh, but you can go higher. So if that prevents you from doing two tacks, that could be worth it to get around the mark. Uh, so that's, that's your height mode, is when you're really trying to, trying to uh, pull a diagonal centerboard through the water. Um, where this falls apart uh, is if you don't notice that you've uh, got a little bit more drag here. Um, so uh, this, this is a disaster. This is like before the start line. But if you just had a little bit more drag... Um, suddenly you're not going as fast, not going as fast, you also don't, uh, don't get enough lift. So then you get the vicious circle, vicious, bad feedback loop. Um, so what you're trying to do is to turn the, pull a diagonal center board through the water just uh, enough that it doesn't stall uh, off the back of the center board. So that's what people are talking about with um, feeling flow on their center board. Um, you can think of it in the big scale like we did at first, where this is the start line, this is upwind, and that's a broad reach. Um, or you can think of it on the, in a very precise scale, where all three of these are close hauled. This is where someone's going quite slow upwind. Uh, this is where someone's in height mode, and this is where someone's in speed mode. 
So how do you pull a diagonal centerboard through the water? Um, if we have, I've tried to draw, so the, the hull of this boat would be maybe pointing, I guess, in the same direction as the centerboard. So the, the front of the boat's up here and then um, back corners there. Um, so yeah, so in this, so these are two separate boats. I've just drawn them close so that you can compare them. So with a very flat sail, this looks like a heavy air sail, or maybe it's a super vang sail, like in, in light wind when you bend the mast a lot um, to uh, not get any hook in the back of the sail to really open it up, um, either because you're overpowered and you don't want to bend the sail too much, or because it's such light wind, so such slow flow of air that you can't bend it too much without it going turbulent. So if you have this flat sail, um, uh, and then we have the, we draw in our, our cord um, from the uh, luff to the leech of the sail. Uh, and then we draw the lift in going, um, going sideways to it. Uh, this, this is pulling sort of in that direction, sort of pushing on. You can move this arrow uh, over to push onto the centerboard um, sort of a little bit forwards. And you can kind of see how that drives the boat forwards. Now, if you uh, let the sail out a little bit and release the kicker uh, on the laser, the mast straightens a bit and you can see those battens just, just hook um, when you release the, re release the kicker. Or in very heavy air, uh, if you're using your Cunningham to bend the top section to open, open the leech up, um, if you release the kicker, sorry, if you release the Cunningham, the top battens hook a little bit. Um, so it's the same, same effect. Um, but the most visible, which you can just sort of do in the boat park, is uh, pull the sail in block to block um, and uh, pull a ton of kicker on and you get a sail that looks like this. And then let the main sheet come up a bit, um, uh, maybe more than that, like 30 centimeters or something. Um, and, uh, and then look at the profile of the sail and you get this hook. So now if we draw the cord in, uh, instead of being at this angle, it's going to be a little bit more, uh, more like that because there's more return from the battens. Um, so this uh, uh, force uh, coming from the sail is going to be more perpendicular uh, to the uh, centerboard, which is a little bit less efficient, uh, and it's going to be a bit further back uh, on the centerboard. Um, so if you move from sort of this, this angle to that angle, um, you can imagine this one, you're almost sort of pushing the, the centerboard forward. This one, you're really, you start to, the, I, I visualize it as the leech Oh, this sail should really be at a different angle, shouldn't it? The leech is pushing on the back of the centerboard. That's kind of how I, I, I imagine it. If you hook the sail, it pushes the back of the centerboard down, and you get this higher angle of attack, which creates more lift, but it slows you down a little bit. So that's height mode. If you can hook the leech a little bit, um, it pulls a diagonal centerboard through the water, giving you lift and drag. Uh, if you want to go a bit faster, you can open the leech um, uh, so that um, you the, the pressure goes forwards um, and more diagonally forwards um, so that the centerboard is going more in the direction of travel of the boat. Um, so you don't get as much lift, except it may be a bit more lift because you're going faster, um, uh, but you do reduce your drag, which is what, what lets you go faster. Uh, so that's sort of uh, how you can think of height mode and speed mode uh, when you're thinking of your centerboard.